Right, good morning everybody. Today we're going to be talking about building this structure, getting this water barrel on there, and using a kit to divert some of our rainwater um, into usable water that's not been contaminated um, like our city water system with chlorine and all that other nonsense. Hopefully we can use it mostly for gardening purposes and there's room for expansion. So stay tuned. I'll talk you through first what we have going on here. And then I have a whole bunch of clips of me actually assembling this little stand here. The hardware I used and why we designed it that way. And also the kit that we used, I'll explain all that kind of in detail. But as you can see, we have our inlet pipe from our divider, from our eave, and our downspout. And then we have a, a valve right here that came with the kit. And then we have an optional one. So I'll stay tuned and I'll show you how I installed all that, what came in the kit, how we built this mega structure out of oak wood and where we got the oak wood from, and hope what we hope to actually use it for. So stay tuned. Morning everybody, it looks like we have a good opportunity here to hook up these water barrels to this downspout. Maybe use it some bricks and whatnot, but first I have to find the little kits that I bought. Those it could be in here. Nope. Nope. Nope, that's for, that's for something else. Ah, uh, there it is. DIY, uh, perfect. There's a good chance to see, we have a bit of a map to, where's the house? We're going to actually plant them, well, plant them. We're going to put these rain barrels either in this little area here or along where those barrels were. But I bought two of these kits. I just got the different hole bits that you'd need. A little adapter there, you just need a saw or a drill. Uh, this will work once my battery is charged. The two main concerns we have when using this kit or setting up these rain barrels is one... We are limited by this hose. This is as long as it is, so if you imagine the barrels could be a decent distance away from that downspout right there. So they could go where that blue one is, or it could be along this way here. So we have some kind of wiggle room. We plan on putting it right against the building anyways. So the second, the second thing to consider is the base itself. Should I use these, what do you even call them? So the question is, should I use cinder blocks or should I make some sort of maybe wooden structure or something like that? The only reason why I think of that is if I use these, it's gonna be hard to kind of level. And I'm going to need to bring it up high enough because the higher this water barrel is, the higher amount of pressure will be at the bottom of it where the hose comes out. So I need to think of the elevation of where that outlet will be from the water barrel to whatever I'm going to be gardening. So everything generally goes down slope from here. Uh, but it'd be really nice to get it especially high so that it has the most pressure and some sort of scientific formula to figure that out. Well, that's what I was thinking. If I built some sort of wooden structure, then I could have a shelf underneath kind of a deal. And it would serve both purposes. And I wouldn't have to try and piece together and get too creative with the design of my cinder blocks here. What I'm going to do is not watch another YouTube video about the base of it, but I'm going to ask a friend of mine that has had rain barrels for a few years, and then I'll be back. So to build this thing, we're going to use some of these four foot pieces of scrap or whatever that the guy gave me for free. Uh, this is oak from uh, pallets for heavy duty equipment or whatever, so none of it's been sprayed or anything like that. Uh, and this is, they're all about that height, so these will be our main pillars for the stand this will be a two foot by two foot just over two foot by two foot frame 
Um, and these boards we actually paid for two dollars, and that was for five five foot boards. We got twenty of them, so hundred dollars for oak. A little bit thicker than two by four. And then we'll get to it. I don't actually know how to build anything, so we're gonna just throw some screws in here. Since I don't actually know what I'm doing, even the first measurement was a little bit confusing for me. So I kind of figured it might be like 29 and three quarters, something like that, in the middle. So what I did is I marked off 29 and three quarter. I brought it down to the mark itself and then saw that it was 29 and three quarter on that end. In order to square this off somewhat, we have both the distance between these two posts are 29 and 5 eighths. And I've measured it here and then I measured it down there. When I go to screw these in, that end might adjust and stuff like that, but I think there's, once I flip it around and get another side to it, hopefully we can get it all kind of squared up. Also, we've measured off seven inches from this bottom and we marked it there. So at least we know that for this end, it'll be the 29 and 5 eighths and the bottom thing will be seven inches from the bottom. Here we have one side done. It took a lot of extra measuring to make sure that those ends ended up being the same distance as these ends. So I kind of did one end at a time, remeasured, held it there. Um, I did end up having to skim some of this off because this board was a little bit longer than that board. And then I also needed to get these Torx head screws because drilling through this, screwing through this oak is a little bit harder. So in order to make sure it didn't slip, we got those more expensive screws with a different bit. Now we have one quarter of it done, so I just need to decide if I'm going to do another one just like this. I guess it's going to be squares, so it's going to be all four of them, the same thing. So let me get to building the other one. And here we have a thing. We have to cut off the tops so that they are flush with our saw, but all the exterior dimensions are the same. Every side is the same and the height is the same all the way around. So this right here is the same as that, but we measured the outside dimensions. This is where we're at so far. We've got the cross bracing. We didn't put anything in the back. However, it looks like we're going to be able to do 30 inch boards and then we just put a cross piece from here all the way to there and same on this side standing up so it's flush and then the boards will come across like this and it actually worked out we didn't plan it this way but we will be able to put one at the bottom. I've got all these in place and I've got that rightmost board screwed in. And these boards are different kind of heights. We're not going to be too concerned about that. These are all rough cut boards anyways. Like we said for pallets. So they're already not very pretty. But that is going to be super strong. I did decide that I will be putting a back brace crosswise there. And then I probably will sneak another board lengthwise under there at least one. But we're just about done here and about to move on to... Uh, putting a barrel up there and actually getting some water. Well, once you know it, we actually ran out of screws. We bought a box of 100 and we were still five short from even getting um, any further than this. We got the back brace cut. We'll put that on, but I'm going to have to run to the store and probably finish tomorrow. But that'll just slide back in place. We'll do the same um, design on the bottom. Uh, pretty much. Well, it's four days later, and we got an even bigger tub of screws. We got all the top planks on and the support beam for it. Now we're just going to screw this in. What I've been doing is putting a couple on the side into the board, and then I've been uh, running screws straight down through that main board there to give it extra strength. Now for setting up the barrel, if my phone wants to zoom, <laughs> here we go. Um, I was just going to grab this first one, but I noticed that it was actually full of water, but this wasn't completely like all the way closed, so maybe that had something to do with it. You see the water? Uh, I guess I can touch it. Yeah, it's all the way full, so it's important to make sure that that is completely closed. 
and even more than that you'll need a some sort of wrench or whatever else I call that a bung hole I know it's like a funny name I guess bung hole but yeah you need a bung hole tool um, to tighten that up or kind of like a pliers you can get pliers to kind of if you use them in a unique way you can get it to seal because you want that to seal uh, we're gonna get this thing dumped out but just so you kind of get an idea we're gonna drill one of the holes into that put the intake higher up and then the overflow will be below that because the overflow is then going to go to the bottom drum and we'll do the same with that um, and lead a hose outside of that so that when one this one overfills it'll actually go into another drum and then when that one overfills it'll go to the side into the grass somewhere all right we're about to start drilling some holes i wanted to see if i could show you some of the parts list here in a kind of a understandable way this right here is the drain uh, we're not actually going to use that because we're going to put the downspout uh, lower on the bottom of the barrel and we're going to have a gap from the bottom of the barrel to that drain so that like sediment and stuff like that can go um, can settle and then we'll have that just above it I'm still not sure what this is. I don't know if this is meant for the top of the barrel or something like that, but this is supposed to be the uh, the winter hole cover. Um, but we need to get this flex diverter installed onto the downspout. So this will go in like this, and it'll simply divert into the hose, which will come off, and then it will connect into the barrel like that through one of these sleeves this sleeve will go into the barrel like a tight fit and then this will plug into the side of it so let's get to drilling these holes so it looks like our little stand is a bit high but it's not too high because we can use the very topmost of that bend to get a feed into that because i wanted to allow for five percent room at the top of that barrel just in case we want to leave water in there and then it would expand in the winter um, due to freezing um, and not actually rupture anything so we just kind of give us an extra option and if you look at this this is just a bypass so on the right i guess right in the center that's where some of the water flow would go so you're only going to get you know five percent of the total water flow so if you're not if you're interested in total flow, uh, this would not be the kit for you. I suppose you could maybe block this off. Um, however, probably limiting the flow from a gutter would probably be a good idea because it would quickly overwhelm this 55 gallon barrel. So just keep that in mind when you're looking for kits. Um, try to figure out what type this is. They do have ones that have a valve or like a little handle. So it'll actually um, in one position, it'll allow everything to flow down through, and then there's another. It'll actually divert it, so you can actually change the position. So keep that in mind. We might actually, depending on how this works out, because this is a test to try and see, um, check out my woodworking skills for one, and to see how this this kit works. Close up here, the hole was easy to drill. I just needed to make sure I had enough room for this top flange, and I just made it because this actually mounts with a couple of screws. This side here, you had to pull in kind of the seal to get it to fit into the hole, but it was pretty simple. So we'll run some screws in here and get our hose hooked up. That's installed. It was pretty easy once I collapsed this, so I actually had something to grab onto. This kit, because it has a three parts, it came with three different bits. So this is for the actual faucet. And you can kind of size up the bit just like that. Same with this one is for the drain. If you want to install the drain, it's just a little bit smaller. Um, and it should be able to squeeze in and fit. So just imagine if you had those backwards. This would be all sorts of way too big. And this would not be nearly big enough. And they're pretty simple. They just slip right on there. And then that nut comes behind it. Here we have the top in, and then we got the bottom spout on. It'll be interesting to see how well that is actually sealed. Um, but it's something that we could actually just swap out with a brass one to get a, a you know, 
some sort of washer or sealer behind it maybe use some thread tape this and that but it is set up enough to test out with our next rain uh, it'll be interesting to see if it leaks if it doesn't leak i'm sure it'll rain in the next day or two i'm not extremely worried about thanks, it thanks everybody for watching i'll kind of go over some of the plans we have for the future because we need to utilize this other bucket and some of the ones behind us and what we'd ultimately like to see is another hose coming out of that as that fills it'll actually go down to this other barrel for storage um, but we could also make another stand over here for another barrel but this was a kit that i had put off installing for i don't know a year and the installation of the kit took all of 12 minutes uh, i think the longest part was deciding uh, which whole saw bit to use um, and even this structure didn't take very long for an amateur not know much of anything about screwing wood together um, but we got all that together it's not going to fall apart there's no way that a barrel of 55 gallon barrel of water is going to gonna hurt it so we're super happy to have that and we're waiting for our next rain to see if this leaks so again thank you for watching if you would like that kit i'll put it the information on the description of the video uh, like i said it does have it's only a, a small diverter it only diverts about five to ten percent of the water which i'm not sure if it's a good thing or not um, but you could always get another kit, like I said, with the valve that turns it on and off. Um, but we're not sure yet how much water to expect in that barrel. Because we still have questions about the angle of the eave itself. I suppose I could put a level in there, uh, like a three foot level or two foot level, something like that. And see how much of the slope is actually coming down. Um, and those are all things that we'll have to figure out. But now that it's actually built and installed, um, now we have some place to actually go and figure this thing out. So thank you again for watching, and we will see you next time. Okay, bye-bye. You don't look to be too happy out here. Is it a little bit colder than, is it a little bit colder than you thought? Oh, sorry, buddy. We'll bring you in. <laughs> All right, let's go, bibos.